So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know.
to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Victory belongs to him. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. belongs to him oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to Jesus and victory belongs to him amen 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 Heavenly Father, we come thanking you, dear God, for sending your only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross, that we may have the right to the tree of life. Now, Lord, as I stand behind this sacred desk, to preach your sacred word to your sacred people. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength, you are my redeemer. And besides you, there is no other. So speak today in such a way that the lost will be saved and that the saved would be encouraged 
and backsliders will come back to you. And if there is someone in need of a church home, touch their hearts that they would even join right here at Bible Way Community and Baptist Church. So Lord, have your way this morning. Boys, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. And praise the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Want to thank the Lord this morning for the music ministry. Amen. They didn't hold back. They. They went on and gave it all this morning. Praise the Lord. And that's what you're supposed to do. Because you don't know when it's going to be your last time. So thank the Lord this morning for those wonderful selections. Amen. In the country, they would say thank you for those numbers this morning. Amen. Well, we are so thankful for all of you this morning. And so let's go on and get started in the word this morning. Amen. Because you need a word this morning. Do anybody need a word this morning? From the Lord. Put a Bible in your hand and stand to your feet if the Lord has given you health and strength to be able to stand and let us recite this morning our Bible covenant. Amen. You got your Bible? Because I'm preaching out the Bible this morning. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Repeat after me. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. If I obey it, I obey it. blessings will come. If I disobey it, curses will come. I am what it says I am. I can be what it says I can be. I can do what it tells me to do through the power of God. This is God's idea. I believe that God's idea is the best idea. I am committed, committed to the biggest thing, the, biggest thing, the, highest, thing, the highest thing, the greatest thing, the, greatest thing, the, best, thing, the best thing, which is, which is obeying, God. obeying God. Therefore, Therefore my, mind my mind is made up, my heart is fixed, my, is fixed. my, spirit, is my spirit is ready to receive, to receive the, word the word of God that will, that will transform, transform my life. Amen. 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 Please remain standing for the reading of the Word of God. <coughs> Taken this morning out of the book of St. Matthew. All right. Matthew chapter 28. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter uh, 28. And I want to look this morning at those first... Ten verses. I want to read the first six verses. And that'll be enough to get us started. Matthew chapter 28, beginning with verse number one, it says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sceptical. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Mm -hmm. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. 
His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Look back up at the end of verse 2. It says, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door. I want to talk about the stone that was rolled away. The stone that was rolled away. High five somebody and tell them pastor going to talk about the stone that was rolled away. The stone that was rolled away and I need your prayers yes, this morning I was out hunting Easter eggs on yesterday yes, yes I had my bucket they was asking me pastor what you gonna do with that bucket and I didn't have nothing on my head and uh, I went to bed last night with a cold and woke up looked like with a cold but you know, this game day. Amen. Uh, and so you may not even be at your best, but you need to do your best. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to do my best, even though I'm not feeling my best. So we need your prayers. A mad customer in a fancy restaurant called his waitress over to the table. He said, this is the worst soup I've ever tasted. I demand to know what did y'all put in this soup? I've never tasted soup this bad. I need to know what did y'all put in this soup? She said, well, let me run and get the manager because I can't tell one bug from the next bug. <laughs> now, that story is somewhat funny, but our country is moving towards a time where that may be true. Where we are moving to a time, ladies and gentlemen, for they are trying to change our diet. And they are trying to move us from animal food uh, like beef and chicken to having bugs. Uh, some of you saw it a couple of weeks ago. I believe it was lesson number 11 in our, or 12 in our Bible a, a study of how Congress is even debating in uh, whether or not they ought to serve uh, bugs to our children in school. In other words, they are trying to move from an old food, beef and chicken, to a new food, bugs. And just how they are trying to move us away physically with physical food, they are trying to move us from an old gospel to a new gospel, which is really not a new gospel. It's an old liberal gospel in new packaging. In other words, they're trying to get us from the meat of the word of God to 
spiritual bugs. As a matter of fact, if we would have just kept on reading right here in our text, verses 11 through 15, is some spiritual books. It, it was the story of the soldiers who had took bribe money from the religious leaders to put out the lie that Jesus then rise from the grave but his followers stole his body yeah. Yeah. well if it's somebody stole his body who did it the disciples they sure didn't do it and we got the story of them hiding in the upper room so they didn't do it the Folks who hated Jesus, the enemies of Christ, they would not uh, risk their life going up against the Roman soldiers to do it. And, and if his body was stole away, why they didn't try to get it back? When something is stolen, if you want it, you try to get it back. But Jesus was walking around on earth 40 days after his resurrection. But yet and still, this lie has been put out and folks are eating these spiritual bugs. This is why we got to know our Bible better than the enemy knowing the Bible. See, you got to know the truth better than your enemies do. And starting with the old, old story. Uh, this story of the resurrection. We, we better make sure that we know that story. Better than any other story in the Bible because Christianity rise and fall on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot in this story. Uh, we're not going to have time to get everything in this story. But why don't we just look at the stone that was rolled away? Can we just look at that stone? And I think we can find four lessons from that stone, if we just look at that stone, would that be all right this morning? Y'all gonna go with me, I'll have to go by myself. First of all, it was a rolled away stone. Let's start right there. It was a rolled away stone, verses 1 and 2. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sceptical, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came, and here it is, and rolled back. That's the, is that in your Bible? Yes. He rolled back the stone. Now notice, the Bible says that it dawned towards the first day of the week. In other words, this was early Sunday morning. Think about it. Friday was dark for the followers of Jesus Christ. And they saw Jesus die on that cross. They saw Jesus being put there in that tomb. As a matter of fact, when you read your Bible back up into chapter 27, verses 60 and 61, talks about how Mary Magdalene and this other Mary, how, how they even saw that stone being rolled there at the door of that tomb. In other words, they was the last to leave the garden, but they was the first to show up. Oh boy, now that's faithfulness. That's faith. Every pastor wants somebody who's the last one to, 
lead the church. Oh, y'all getting off the quiet on me. But the first one to show, boy, that's a sign right there of faithfulness. And so these ladies, they showed up first. And when they got there, they got there with a surprise. The stone had been rolled away. Now this was not a, just a little bit of stone. This wasn't a little um, a, a pebble. This was a giant stone. Uh, some theologian says that this stone may have weighed a ton. We're talking about 2,000 pounds. Some say it may have even weighed two tons. In other words, 4,000 pounds. This was a huge stone. When you read John's gospel, John chapter 20, verse number 1, it says, and the stone was taken away. It, it was like the angel just came down and grabbed that stone and set it down over there. See, something can easily be uh, if, if, if the angel just rolled away because of gravity and what have you. Yeah, yeah, but the hard thing was to take it. All right. Take away something. And that stone was on those ladies' mind early that morning. When you read Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 16, Mark uh, says that when they was going down there to the, the garden that morning, they was asking the question, who's going to roll away the stone for us. They know they didn't have the power to do it. The disciples was too scared to do it. They ain't no getting no cooperation out of the Roman soul. So who's gonna roll away? The stone falls. And when they got down there to the garden, the stone had already been rolled away. In other words, what they was trying to figure out, God had already worked it out. How many of you know when you walk with the Lord, I'm talking about you got a, a close walk with God. You're one of his faithful children. While you trying to figure stuff out, won't God work it out for you? That stone was rolled away. That's why you need God in your life. You know, a lot of people today, they say, well, I don't need God in my life. You know, I can make it if I could just get me a good education. If I can just get me a good job. I can make, maybe if I just get me a husband, a wife, then I know that we can make it together. All right, though, to use, try to make it without God if you want to with your bad self. But I got one question for you. Who's going to take away your stone? Who's going to roll away your stone for you? If you hadn't ran into something that's bigger than you, a problem more powerful than you, more heavier than you, just keep on living, cause sooner or later, you're gonna come up against a problem and you ain't gonna no be able to pick it up and lift your way out of it. Oh, something's gonna be so heavy, you're not gonna be able to push your way out. You're not gonna be able to pull your way or drag your way out of it. You're not going to even be able to thank your way out of it. I don't care how much money you got, you're not going to even be able to buy your way out of it. 
God is going to have to move that stone. He's going to have to send somebody to roll away your stone. That's why you need God in your life. How many of you know that God is a stone mover? Won't he move stones out your life? That was a rolled away stone. But number two, uh, it was a resting stone. It was a resting stone. Can we look back at the text? Look at verse 2 again. It said, For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Is that in your Bible? You see, it said, He sat upon it. Notice now, the angel did not come down and was rubbing his chin. And was wondering about that stone. Yeah. He didn't come down scratching his head. Yeah. Over the stone. He didn't come walking back and forth pacing. Yeah. Over the stone. He wasn't frustrated and kicking up dust. <laughs> over the stone. He wasn't just sitting there contemplating, I'm going to move the stone. But the Bible says he was sitting there resting. He was relaxing. That was a picture of perfect rest. Now think about it now. The angel don't need no rest. We the one that need some rest. Oh, and that's the thing. When you come to the Lord, one of the signs you done came to the Lord is you got rest. If you just still worrying and you contemplating and all of this, no, no, you must ain't came to the Lord. Because the God that I serve, he can take away those stones and bring rest in your life. As a matter of fact, I think this is why Mary came back to that grave early that morning. Because Mary at one time, she had experience. Yes, she did. Rest. Salvific rest. Uh, don't you remember her story is recorded for us over in Luke chapter 8 verse number 2. It talks about how Mary at one time before she met Jesus, she had seven demons in her. How, now the Bible don't exactly tell us what them demons were. You know, uh, some Bible scholar says that uh, Mary was a prostitute. Yeah. But the text don't tell us whether or not she was a prostitute. But we do know she had seven demons. And how many of you know that demons have running partners? Yeah, yeah. yeah matter of fact, the sins in your life they have a running partner. They just don't show up by themselves. They go get another running partner. That. I know I'm right about it. See, a person can be on drugs, but that person who's on drugs also lie a lot. Uh, that line is a running partner to drugs. That person who's on alcohol also get into sexual promiscuity. That's a running partner. That person who's into gambling also got an anger problem. They will hurt you and kill you because they'll fight you over their money. That's a running partner, that anger. 
Yeah. I don't know what her running partner, I don't even know what their sin was, but the Bible says that she had those seven demons, and demons are coming to your life to take away your peace. Yeah. The devil, one of the ways you know he's in your life, he's going to disturb your peace. You're not going to have no rest in your house because there's no rest in your heart. You're not going to have no rest on the job because there's no rest in the heart. The devil want to mess your life up from the flow of you won't have no peace. This, uh, she didn't have no peace. Uh, Mary did. But once she met Jesus. <laughs> Mary had perfect rest. She had that perfect peace in her life. Oh, but she lost it. How did she lose it? Well, when she saw her Lord and her Savior, Jesus Christ, dying upon the cross, put in a tomb, Mary lost her peace. When she lost her Lord, when her Lord lost his life, then she lost peace. And I believe Mary came back to that garden early that Sunday morning to get her rest back. Because she couldn't rest because she saw them anoint the body of Jesus. But they, they wrapped it up and anointed it in such a hairy because the sun was getting ready to go down and they couldn't do no work on the Sabbath day. And Mary in the back of her mind that the Lord didn't really have a decent barrier. So I got to get down there first thing Sunday morning and do this job. Right? She didn't have no rest. She had rest but she lost it and now she went down there to get it back. Do you know, I know somebody sitting up in here just like Mary this morning. At one time you had rest. One time you had the peace of God in your life. You was just like Mary. At one time you had some demons running in and out of your life, messing your life up. Oh, but you met Jesus. And when you met Jesus, what a difference Jesus made in your life. He took away all that bad stuff out your life and he put his spirit, the right stuff, in your life. And you had perfect peace. Oh, yeah. Like Paul said, you had that peace that surpassed all understanding. That it guards your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. You had it, but you lost it. Oh, how did you lose it? You didn't stay with the Lord. If you stay with the Lord, how many of you know the Lord will stay with you? But if you turn your back on the Lord, the Lord will turn his back on you. And you just got busy in doing other things of, rather than staying with the Lord. You got busy. You didn't, you was too busy to read your Bible. You was too busy to go to church. You was too busy to hang out with the body of Christ. And your life began to have a spiral down, down, down. Until your life start spiraling out of control. It was even worse than it was at first. Oh, but I got some good news for you today. If you had it and you lost it, I believe God done brought you here today to get it back. You can get it back. I say you can get it back. I believe God brought you here today to get it back. 
So at the end of service today, I'm going to give an invitation. And don't you dare let that devil block you. Don't you let him stop you from getting it back. You ought to tell somebody, hey, I'm warning you right now. I believe God is calling me to get it back that day. So you're going to have to get out of my way. Don't stop me. Don't block me because I'm getting it back. It was, a, it was a rolled away stone. It was a resting stone. But number three, it was a repeated stone. Stay with me. It was a repeated stone. Notice here, back in chapter 27 of Matthew. Look at verse number 20, 51 to 53. It says, and behold, in other words, check this out. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the grave was open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And there came out of the grave after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Think about it. This was a repeated stone. What do I mean? The same thing that had happened to Jesus' tombstone happened to these people. Tombstone. Did you see that? Right there in the text. Look at that first miracle that's when Jesus died on the cross and gave up the ghost the Bible says the veil in the temple was written from top to, you know that curtain was so thick and it was so tall you could take two horses put a horse on that end and a horse on and and the horse couldn't even pull them apart and notice we know that a man couldn't do it of horses couldn't do it. See, if man was going to do it, it would have been towed from the bottom to the top. But this here was towed from the top. Oh, that's a miracle right there. Don't miss your miracle. But notice, notice, notice this other miracle. The Bible says, and the earth did quake, and the rock rent, and the graves were open. Back in Bible day, the graves was like a cave, and they had stones in front of the cave. Think about it. <laughs> the stone that was in front of the cave was rolled away. Just like what happened to Jesus is now happening to these people. That was a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. All them stones down there in Jerusalem. In other words, Jesus wasn't the only one that got up on that Sunday morning. On that Sunday morning, you had the saints of God there in Jerusalem. You know, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the first fruit. You know, what farmers would do, they would plant a garden. And then they would wait until they start seeing it bud. And then they would wait a little bit longer until they see uh, some fruit start showing. And when they get a little fruit, they'll take a little fruit. And they'll go home with the little fruit. And they'll get all excited over the little fruit. Because they know if they just wait a little while longer, a whole bunch of fruit is on the way. Christ was the first fruit. These saints, they was part of the first fruit of Christ. And because of their resurrection and Christ's resurrection, that gives us hope that we're going to have a resurrection as well. 
Can't you imagine that first morning there? Uh, uh, how those saints that was once dead, now they're alive. They went on back over to the house and knocked on the door and said, what you got for breakfast this morning? You're talking about, guess who coming to dinner? But think about what happened to them. It's the same thing gonna happen to us. See, that's, that's why y'all to get excited about Easter. It's not only that Jesus got up, but that means that one day you gonna get up. People make a big deal and they say, uh, thank God that Christ was buried in a borrowed tomb. Newsflash, the tomb that they bury you and me in, that's a borrowed tomb as well. You ain't no be there forever. Big mama and them ain't no be there forever. Mama and them ain't no be there forever. Daddy and them ain't no be there forever. Cause one day the Bible says that Jesus is going to come back with the voice, the shout of an archangel and the dead in Christ is going to rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. Shall be caught up. Shall be caught up together with them in the air. The Bible says comfort one another with these words. How many of you know that one day it's going to be a family reunion? Not down here. Not in East Texas. Not in Chicago or uh, L.A. But it's going to be in heaven. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Oh. So that stone was a road away stone. That stone was a rested stone. That stone was a repeated stone. Let me tell you one other thing. That stone was a memorial stone. It was a memorial stone. You got your Bible? Go back on over here to Matthew 28. Look here at verse number five and six. It says, and the angel answered and said to the women, fear not ye, for I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen. And just said, come and see. Lord have mercy. The place of where the Lord lay. This stone and this empty tomb is a memorial to the greatness of Jesus Christ. You know, we set up memorials so we won't forget the greatness of that person. As a matter of fact, if you would just go to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is a city that's full of memorials. Yeah. When, when you go to Washington, you can see the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument is the highest building in Washington, D.C. And it was set aside, it was built so we wouldn't forget the accomplishment of our first president, George Washington. And when you finish looking at the Washington Monument, you can browse on over there to the Lincoln Memorial. And the Lincoln Memorial stands today as a memorial so that we would never forget uh, what Abraham Lincoln, who freed the slaves, we'll never forget what he has done. But then you can walk on over a little bit further 
And you can see the Jefferson Monument. And the Jefferson Monument has been set aside. So we would never forget Thomas Jefferson, the architect, the man who wrote out the Declaration of Independence. But you can keep on walking and you can see another monument of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The drum major of the Civil Rights Movement. And that monument stands as a memorial so we would never forget the, of what Dr. King has done for this country. But even though all of those monuments is great, and even though all of those presidents and citizens like Martin Luther King, they was great. Oh, if you really want to see greatness, go on over to Jerusalem. Because see, Martin Luther King, he was great, but he's still in the grave. Thomas Jefferson was great, but he's still in the grave. Abraham Lincoln was great, but he's still in the grave. George Washington was great, but he's still in the grave. But when you go to Jerusalem, he's not here. He done risen as he said. Jesus ain't in the grave. That's why the songwriter says, how great is our God. Sing it with me, how great is our God. And all of us will see how great, how great is our God. Do you know he's great today? I say, do you know he's great today? As I come to a close, there was a man walking in the graveyard and he noticed a marker on this cemetery tombstone. And it read, remember me as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I, as I am now, so you must be prepared for death and follow me. The man thought about that and he wrote down at the bottom of that marker, to follow you don't make sense because I don't know which way you went. The reason I can recommend Jesus today and tell you to follow Jesus is because I know which way he went. Somebody ought to say glory. Somebody ought to say glory. Glory, hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. Now take this word, bring honor and glory to your name. Draw your people to yourself. Do what only you can do. And we'll be careful to praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, at this time we will celebrate the Holy Communion. On the last night that Jesus was with his disciples, he took bread and he said, this is the body that is broken for you and for many. As often as you eat of it, you show that you have faith in me until I come again. Hold it up. Let me consecrate it. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would consecrate this bread 
And then as we partake of it, consecrate our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After supper, they took a cup. Jesus says this cup represents his blood of the New Testament. As often as you drink of it, you show that you have faith in him until he come again. Hold your, up your cup and let me consecrate it. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would consecrate this juice symbolizing the blood of Jesus. I ask, dear God, that you would consecrate it, but then consecrate our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That concludes our Sunday morning worship service as well as our communion service. At this time, benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all God's children say it. Amen. God bless you. See you. Wednesday night.